Are you sitting in a space where you are struggling with anxiety? Do you feel like a prisoner to the cycles of depression? Do you feel stuck in your own life and feel frustrated and lost, but yet you know there is so much more on the other side of this mental breakdown? I want to hold your hand through this therapeutic life healing journey. I will help you navigate emotional healing, spiritual growth, and taking massive action so you can align your mind, body, and spirit to completely transforming your life. You are worthy of the life of your dreams, of stepping into your power and experiencing your breakdown as your breakthrough. Hey, I'm Adi. I'm your therapist, your coach, your mentor. Join me as we heal your life together. Welcome back to Therapeutic Life Healing with me, Adi, your host. Thanks so much for being here today. If you are new, welcome. I hope that you stay and browse around some of the other episodes and find something that resonates for you on your healing journey. If you've been returning every week, thank you so much for being here and being a loyal listener. And I hope that in some way I have been inspiring to your healing journey. Now, in today's episode, we're going to talk about nine ways to get through a difficult day. And I hope that wherever you are in the world, that you take some time out to take good care of your heart, your spirit, your soul, because it is a really crazy world that we live in. And there's always something trying to pull at us to get our attention. And we might be in a good place. And then all of a sudden we hear something on the news and it just takes us out of our joy. So if you're sitting in a difficult day, I hope that this episode can help you pull through and come back to your heart center. Before we dive into the episode, I just want to take a moment to thank the listeners who have left a review on the podcast. I really appreciate each and every single review. It really helps to reach more audiences to find this podcast and make healing accessible. So if you haven't already, please take a moment to pause and go and subscribe and be sure to rate and review this podcast show. Also, if you're in a place where you're feeling overwhelmed right now by life, I want to invite you to my workshop from Overwhelmed to Empowered in July. We're going to start on Tuesday, July 6th at 6.30 p.m. via Zoom Pacific Standard Time. It's a one-hour workshop each week on a Tuesday until the end of July. Now, if you can't join us live, no worries. You're going to catch the replay that I will email out to you. And if you're on the workshop, just know I want you to show up as you are most comfortable. So that can mean you can leave your camera off. You can leave your microphone off. If you'd like to participate, you're more than welcome to. So it's going to be a bit me teaching you life strategies around boundaries, a time management tool that can really help you prioritize what matters most to you. So go ahead and head over to my website, aditc.com. It's also in the show notes and you can learn more and enroll today. Now let's dive into the episode. So the nine ways that you can get through a difficult day, we're going to dive into them and we've all had them. You know, when you've had a day where it just, you feel like you're in a funk and nothing is going right and you just feel really down. You might feel upset or sad or just you can't quite put your finger on what it is that you feel, but you just don't quite feel like yourself. You feel like it's just been one of those days. And difficult days are inevitable, right? We all feel them from time to time. It's not something that we can avoid. Some days just feel light and easy and others not so much. And, you know, it's that balance of joy and sorrow, good and bad. And some days just feel a little bit better and some days don't feel as good. And so forcing ourselves to turn off the bad or turn off our feelings when we're having a difficult day doesn't help. And it could actually add more pressure to try to make us feel better. And in fact, it's it's not helpful. It's counterintuitive to think about just leaning into that difficulty and leaning into your feelings. But that's where the medicine is. That really is what can really help you trying to acknowledge where you're at and just letting things be and finding ways to really introduce that ease until you feel that shift. So the next time you're having a difficult day, just rest in some of these tips that will really help you feel better again soon. Number one, remember to just be gentle with yourself. It's easy to fall into self-judgment, self-criticism, and frustration when we're struggling, but this tends to make the experience more painful. So trying to just cut yourself some slack and accept that this is how it is right now. You're worthy of your own kindness, 
So be tender with yourself. Number two, take things off your plate. Your priority is to carve out time for self-care right now. So do what you can to clear your schedule and avoid any potential stressful situations. If canceling plans makes you feel guilty, just remind yourself that you can't help others unless you put your health and your well-being first. Number three, feel your feelings. We often want to suppress our emotions, especially if they're unpleasant or intense, but bottling them up really can lead to more pain in the long run. Remember, your feelings are valid and it's important to acknowledge them. Allow yourself to feel. And if you need to cry to let it out, you know, that's okay. Let yourself cry. Number four, allow yourself to rest. Everything just feels harder when we're tired. So just give yourself permission to get the rest that you need, even if you have to carve it out in advance. Just look in your schedule and see where you can get that rest. And notice how it positively impacts your perspective and your capacity to just cope with the day. If you can't physically sleep or nap or anything like that, then just lean into the stillness and quiet by doing something relaxing like meditating or reading. I often love to just even take some time out, even 20 minutes to just lay on my bed. And I have these eye warmers um, that they're like just like self-heating eye warmers. You can find them online. And I put that on and I put a little bit of spa music and I just give myself a 20 minute state of stillness and it brings so much calmness to my nervous system. So that's just one idea to just continue to incorporate rest on a difficult day. Number five, honor your needs. Check in with yourself. What do you actually need right now? Rest, connection, distraction. If you're unsure, ask yourself whether what you're doing is helping you. Like if we're on social media just scrolling and it feels like doomsday and everything begins to feel really difficult for you because you're starting to compare yourself to other people. Maybe you're maybe you're consuming bad news and it just feels like doomsday when you're scrolling. And if that's what it is, maybe just spending some time to cut back on your social media intake and do something else. But whatever it is, just figure out what you need and what would be more helpful right now to you and do that instead. Number six, find positive distractions. Actually, it's really kind of helpful to have distractions on a difficult day. Just make sure that they're positive and they're good to your central nervous system to just help you feel calm in the moment. It may be helpful to ride out the storm with some just gentle distractions, like your even favorite TV show, you know, Netflix. I'm a big fan of just having Netflix shows that I enjoy binge watching on difficult days. It just is a helpful distraction. Other days, a walk outside feels really good to me. At least trying to get 30 minutes in a day feels really nice. And I notice the difference on days when I don't do it and a difference when I do do it. Um, Other things that can be helpful and positive distractions are cooking, journaling, listening to music, dancing, taking a nice warm bath, shower, just whatever makes you feel comforted. The aim isn't to try to make everything better, but rather to avoid making things feel worse. Number seven, lean on your support network. The simple act of just sharing our experience can make us feel lighter and less alone. So even just seeking support if you need it and allow the people that love you to just step up for you and allow that help in. And if you feel like you don't have someone that you can turn to, it's okay to ask for professional help and support. There's plenty of support systems out there that are professional around supporting you and your mental health. It's just taking time to access them. And there's a wide range of price points that can really fit your budget needs. But just know that people would want to help you. Remember that. And remember when the world comes crashing at your feet, it's okay to let others help pick up the pieces. And that's a quote by Ruby Carr. And number eight, breathe. Just remember that this too shall pass. That's one of my favorite reminders to tell myself in that moment, that this too shall pass. When we're in the middle of a storm, for me, it's in the middle of my grief storm as it comes up. Remember, it can be hard to really remember that it's temporary, but feelings are temporary. Our moods are temporary. And just take comfort in the fact that you've been here before and you got through it. Chances are you'll come out the other side soon. So just so you just have to hold on, take deep breaths, and ask for help. Just remember that deep breaths can really help. And lastly, number nine, take note. 
literally life is full of difficult days, but you can make the next one easier by just taking note of what has helped you through this one. Jot down the strategies that worked for you and you can refer to them in the future. This is how you build a mental health toolkit that's designed just for you. I hope those nine tips have been helpful to you and may you just find ease the next time you have a difficult day and save this episode, share it with a friend or a family member that you think is struggling right now and let them know that you too have days that are difficult and let them know what ways have helped you and encourage each other by just sharing and opening up with one another. There's uh, so much power and vulnerability um, that can go a long way to really help each of you in your healing journey. So share this episode with a friend, share it with a loved one, and share it on social media. Tag me in the episode. I'd love to see how it's helped you. And I wish you nothing but blessings. And I hope that you continue to take care of yourself. And in return, that helps us better take good care of each other. Thank you so much for tuning into today's episode. I trust that you took away some gems, some highlights for yourself in this episode. And I want to invite you to dive deeper with me if you'd like to schedule a one-on-one personalized healing session where we can really dive deeper into what's coming up for you, what you're struggling with. If you're in a place of transition in your life, whether that's relationships, careers, if you're struggling with boundaries, and we can really unpack that together and create a breakthrough session for you. Go ahead and email me at hello at aditzi.com. That's hello at aditzi.com. It's also in the show notes. I also offer a virtual master course. That's a therapeutic life healing master course that's virtual, self paced at home. And it's guided with slides and videos of me really walking you through a three week structured program that will help you learn about boundaries, understand fear in the brain and how it has shown up in your life. There's journal prompts and guided meditations. So go to aditzi.com and click on virtual master course to see the curriculum today. And you can enroll wherever you are in the world right away and start in the comfort of your own home today. If you found any value in today's episode, please go ahead and subscribe to the podcast and leave a review. I'd love to hear from you and what you think. And I hope that you take care of yourself on your healing journey and take care of each other.